The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting in for the hour of Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry is improving tremendously, I believe, and it looks like he'll be back on Monday. There's a little time switch. Steve Rhodes is going to do his time that was usually at now, at 11 o'clock to noon Eastern time. And uh, Larry's going to take Steve's uh, hour at 1 o'clock. So that's just a time change, but not a place change, because uh, Larry will be back on Monday, I believe. So let me do a couple of things here based on Chevrolet methodology. And, of course, I do have a webinar coming up um, on Wednesday, 9 o'clock till 2. And uh, had I remembered that the Fed is going to do something at 2 o'clock, I might have made it a little later. They've gone a little longer. But we will, we will be prepared for whatever happens at 2 o'clock via the Fed. Um, so as it stands right now, let me just do a couple of things just to, to kick us off. We're down 53 in the Dow, 32,759. In the patterns that I always look at, uh, one of the most important is that if you can identify the lowest low bar, and there are techniques to do that, you want to count each successively higher bar. It can go A, B, C, D, even E, F, and G, never an H. But at that fourth highest bar, peak D, remember this is not A to B equals C to D. This has got nothing to do with this. This is done during the time where Prechter was very famously talking about Elliott Wave. And I saw the numbers there and I thought, you know, I can't do that. I don't want to mix it up. I have nothing to do with it. And I've been using this forever. And yeah, this guy's getting all this acclaim. Um, I better just do something different. So I decided to call it peak A, peak B, peak C, and peak D. And I'm not sure why I'm hearing that ringing out there. So um, when you get to a, a, a starting point, then you want to see an upgrade very quickly from a buy signal to a buy mode. And that implies that it shouldn't just go peak A, B. It should go C and even a D. Your target is at least a peak D. Now, I'm going to mention this right now, off, off, right off the top, because um, in the S&P, no matter how... I or anybody else counts it using the Chapman Wave methodology. The top that was made at 4818.62 in January was peak B. And that says no matter how much consolidation we take, how much time we take, probably as long as we don't break 3200 or 3000, and then I'll have to reassess everything, it still wouldn't be technically a failure. It has to break 2191. 0.86 to be a complete failure in the Chapman Wave methodology, you could start to get a peak A and a B and a C and even a D below that previous peak of 4818.62, but you got to get to a D. So that says, looking out, if we can survive all these months, these seven, eight months, depends on which index, eight months or even nine months of the consolidation that we've seen up until now, um, we've used up more time than price under normal circumstances. In a major sell, you get a 50, 51, 52% correction in the S&P. That's kind of traditional historically for those big, big downturns. But you can use up time. And I think so far we've used up a tremendous amount of time. And I was talking about sector rotation. And that's been the big thing about this whole market as long as there are sectors that can do well while others are taking it, taking a breather, and then they take a breather when the others come back again, that essentially can you, move you sideways. Maybe slightly lower lows and slightly high, lower highs, but basically sideways. That's what we're in right now. So that means that a lot of bad news is, could still come out, and we could still have these two, 3,000 point declines in the Dow, but you keep trying to build a base, and so, so far the base has been um, in the S&P at 3636, and the Dow it's been at 29, uh, 29, where did it go? 29, six, 653, 29,653 in the QQQ, 
their bases being at 269, having gone from 408 to 260. That's having 30 something percent. That's a big move down. But we've started a gray leg A in the week in the monthly chart for the very first time in all the indices, and that's kind of good. It means that this is at least even if you treat it as a counter trend rally. All right. So let me just go back to show you some some patterns here. If you're looking at the cues, here's a little doji candle we're making right now. The day's young. We're not even two hours into the session. Anything can happen. It's holding pretty well. The stochastics at 92%. None of these techniques is what Larry uses. You could even consider that there's in some in some degree there's been a um, a godly. Uh, yeah, you could call that a Gartley and that, in fact, we're expanding to the upside and we're getting close to the top of that. But it happens to match. So let me show you the reason why I'm getting cautious. It's a shorter term. I'm not getting so much bearish, but cautious. There's a big difference. Cautious means the upside is limited. Why? Because the left side high in the, S in the QQQ of the 4th of May at 330.29 happens to correspond within a few points of the 200 period exponential moving average of 327. Now, of course, I'm talking a foreign language if you were listening to Larry's show, because Larry uses sometimes we come to the very same conclusions, but in different ways. So the techniques that I'm using here, you just throw these things on your chart. You don't have to use them until you have to. You, you could be doing something like this, which is the naked chart. And the naked chart says, look, QQQ, I, I, I've done this the other day. I was showing the patterns that there's a rectangle formation a, a wide but long rectangle formation is making, I call it the gravy cup pattern, where you come down in a cup formation, but you're really lopsided because in this case, you're more on the left than on the right. And now you're making higher highs and higher lows. And the objective is to get you to the rectangle high, in this case of 314.56. Um, that was in June. That was June the 2nd. And you had that big tumble down to mid-June to the 268 level. And here you are at 321. And what's really important about this is what I'll be teaching is how do you use these tools? Look, here's the nine period moving average exponential went over the 14 period moving average, gave nice signals and a really strong signal right there to say, hey, this is going to this is now positive and it should be moving up. That's why you can draw the pattern that says stair step move up, then the consolidation, up, then a consolidation, up, and then a consolidation. Now the consolidation is getting shorter and shorter. This was just two bars, and the third bar was higher. No more rule of uh, uh, one, three, six. One consolidation bar is great. Uh, three, it takes a little more time. It's still very good. When it gets to six, you almost have to restart a buy signal or a sell signal to get to generate the, the rocket ship propeller move to break out of the left side high or left side low. And in this case, it's getting shorter. It tells me we're starting to get more recognition of this bull phase. And now you mean it means you're also getting a little bit overboard. So this is the 9 over the 14. This is the stochastic, look how strong that is at 92%. This is the same chart with the uh, MACD, look how strong that is. This is the same chart with the 9 over the 14, the MACD very strong, the um, stochastic flat, I love flat at 92%, and the on-balance volume pulling back a little bit. And that just says to me there's still internal strength in the Qs, and this is the whole combination with everything together, and um, that shows you price movement. I'll be back in a moment, Basil Chapman, uh, we'll be looking at the questions came in. I'm going to be doing, what was it, the NVIDIA and Adobe as soon as I return. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So the pattern that I discussed just now is the, is the large rectangle. Remember, you can get narrow rectangles. There was one last night in the E-mini. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh, I haven't even notated that. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. This is a little bit wider, but it's still a pretty narrow one when you think about it. From the uh, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock high yesterday of 41.68, was it? Uh, 4170 round number high. You went into a rectangle formation with a 4148 low. And look at this. Look how long this rectangle remained in place. Then what I did is I drew my left side, right side price tie match to a particular candle. And it said that somewhere, let me just move this away so you can see what I did. These patterns invariably, the longer you get the narrow rectangle, the, the greater the chance that you're going to form some kind of a low and still get a peak A, B, C, and eventually a D or an E above the previous high, then you've got to be careful. And it usually forms a kind of a bowl formation, more like a, like a, like a bowl. Yeah, like a, like a, not a cup, but a bowl stretched out. And then you've got to be careful because if it comes back down in this long rectangle, whoa, 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 give that, take that, there it is. If it comes back in the rectangle and takes out halfway of the rectangle and starts to trade under it, which it did, be careful because it's going to test the low. And when it comes back from being over the rectangle high, there's a real good chance that it's come back and go under the rectangle low. So that was the 10-minute E-mini chart. And lo and behold, what happened? It did just that. <laughs> Didn't grab that correctly. There it is. And we've been trading where to? To the 200 period moving average, which has become support for the last 30, 40 minutes. Isn't that interesting? So right, I'll be back to that because what I wanted to talk about was this rectangle formation. So the question came in, what about Adobe Cloud Digital Commerce? They did everything. 699.44 was the high last year. A little bit of a tumble. 338, more than a 50% decline. But look what happened. Uh, here we go. Rectangle formation right there because you're going back. There's a chance that you can go back to the top. There's the lopsided cup, which is the gravy cup. There it is right there. 
I actually, my eye just hurts when I do that. I need to just, I move it a little bit because I can't stand to see that lopsided gravy cup. And then it's moving up. So I've got it in leg F right now. It could be an alternate count, F slash B, a brand new buy signal. But I'm just going to keep the notation going alphabetically to G at this particular point because the MACD is so strong. And look, the 9 is so strong over the 14 period moving average. And remember, the moving average convergence divergence, that green line basically is outlining the price of what you're following. That's why when every once in a while, the price goes higher, and yet the MACD keeps going lower. It confuses people who only use the MACD. That's the reason why I say be prepared. Use other techniques as well. So in this particular technique, the rule of thumb is that if you start off your flagpole, move to the upside. This is not quite because it started or we went even lower down. It starts to make higher highs and higher lows. You can get a move to a peak D or maybe a little higher just under, right on, or just above the previous high, and that was the high of 441.90 on the 2nd of June. 441.90, that was 2nd of June. Um, and what have we done? We've gone all the way to today's high in leg F at 427.85, still underneath that previous high, but still with good technicals. So the, the question the, the uh, question was, Adobe, Adobe, what was the question? Um, oh, I said I'd do NVIDIA first. So I just, I said somewhere, oh, and DE. Okay, there's a lot to do. So in the meantime, where, where did Adobe fit in? Uh, did I just jump the guy? Oops, missed that A. On, yeah, that's what that, your obligation is. to uh, you got, Your only obligation in the chart wave is not to miss a peak, even if it's by one penny. You see that there? My eye picks it up. I've done so many hundreds of thousands of these. I could see that that was a penny difference, or maybe more, but just it was a difference. And that's peak A. So this is a leg F. But look at the weekly chart. It's peak A, peak C, and it's still within this rectangle, struggling to take out the high that was made uh, around on the 10th and the uh, 3rd of June, the weekly chart, the high of 441, 19, 440 round number. So it's still moving higher. The technicals are improving. And that's what I meant when I said the reason why I'm looking at this and saying there's a rotation through the different sectors and for my subscribers, you know that I mentioned one this morning that I haven't spoken about in ages. Not only that, we went long a particular, uh, a particular index or an ETF we haven't been along this ETF in ages as this price has come down, down, down. But finally, I think there's a bit that is a better risk reward. So we have started a position. So within that context, we're looking at Adobe, which was a fantastic leader going to the top. Uh, that was the top. Right now, I wrote it in the daily, I'm sure. Yep, there it is. Uh, it's 699.54, uh, not 44, 54. Chapman wave two bar reversal on the 22nd of November at a peak E made a cup formation. If you look at the left side, right side uh, match, vertical match, you'll see that the technicals were way weaker in that next rebound. And then it just plunged after that. So this is the first really, I would say, not the first decent bounce it had decent it's had decent bounce. It even made a peak D before at 441.90 uh, back in uh, the beginning of June before it plunged to the round number 338. Well, I, I love looking at round numbers. So this says it's doing very nicely. It's very methodical. It's not great, but it is doing well. And this could be the start of a bigger move if over the more intermediate term, the 408 to 400 support area isn't taken out. So you have a September 145 call. I like that because this is going to need time to generate a second nuanced uh, trigger for a move of, of 40 to 60 points. And to do that, I suspect it needs just a little more time. Maybe it's next week, late next week. Maybe it needs to pull back a little bit. Maybe it just suddenly finds buyers right now. But 441.90 is the resistance. If at any point, in the, and the reason why I like your September is I would give it time. I, I wouldn't want to say, oh, this coming Friday or whatever it is, uh, um, um, August, third week of monthly options, the third week of, of no, I would, I'd like the time. So it, it, 
I would even have thought October would be safer, but I'm quite satisfied that September, the third week, that takes you to the 15th of September, uh, two months, no, a month and a week. That's five weeks from now. That's about the time that I'd be looking at. So one of the reasons is if at any point it starts to trade at 442, uh, no, 446.80 or 447.30 in that area, the magnet of the 457 level of the 200 period moving average kicks in, and that would be your target. So I like the fact that it's working its way for the first time closer and closer to the 200 period moving average, but it's not there yet. So yes, I like it. I like the fact that you're looking at NVIDIA. NVIDIA is a um, semiconductor area. It's been split a number of times, trading at 188. We'll be back in a minute. We'll talk about the 200 period moving average right here, which is at 203. I'll be back. Basil Chapman sitting in for the hour of Larry Pozzavento. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I got those right. I have to do those over again because I, I mixed up the different uh, the questions. I'll do it. But look, the uh, objective in the chat wave is to get to at least a D in a buy mode. And always watching the 200 period moving average. Well, lo and behold, it went from a 1040. It went from about 41.35 in the E mini to where a peak F right touched three times out of four. The 200 period moving average made a cup formation, had a much worse technical picture on the right side, pulled back sharply, tried to do it again. Technical picture was still weak, and now we're making a cup formation. So, how about that, huh? So let's get back to our story here. So let me just go through. NVIDIA, uh, the question for the option was on Qualcomm. So let me just get back here. So NVIDIA is trading in leg C. Um, 
also with a cup formation. And I could also, once again, do the left side, right side price time match right there uh, to there. Change color. You don't have to have all this paraphernalia. You could just, you could just count the number of bars. It's easy enough. Um, but I have it, so I use it. Why not? Okay, and that says left side, right side price tie match to the left side high of peak D in the uh, Nvidia high that was made on the second of June at 196.10, uh, 196.19 plunges down to 140. Now it's back up at 188 in leg C. Technicals are pretty good. And that says it should try to get to the one. Yeah, it should get to the 196, uh, 194 to 196 area, but it might take time. In other words, it might pull back at C and then go to D and then take a little bit more time to make a cup formation for another uh, attempt. At any point in August, if NVIDIA is trading at 198 to 100 and, yeah, I, I would say at 190, anywhere in the 198, that 203.26 or whatever it is at that time, the 200 period moving average will become a magnet. The further it pulls away from here under one, 183, uh, the, the harder it's going to get, take, to get the, it's not quite as strong as the others. Now let's go to Qualcomm. Qualcomm. Beta Peak C. This 200 period moving average is such a magnet, this orange line, that it, it, it couldn't go further. It had to come back and retest. Now it's got four green candles trying its best to turn the 146 area into support. Most importantly, um, I'm looking at the weekly chart, and I, I, I like Qualcomm much earlier. We didn't actually have it, but I said I like Qualcomm. It was in the one, I think, 33 area. You see this channel, uh, this down channel? It's broken out of it, but it keeps coming back, and that makes 141, the 200 period moving average. I think that my eye says that this is going to struggle a little bit more than the others we've been looking at. So I wouldn't be surprised if it takes a little while. There might be a sudden pop to, to break into leg D in the daily chart at 156.67 to start leg D, one penny above that high. It's going to take a little time. So this is the one that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, I don't know what the... Ah, I have September calls. Oh, September 145 calls. Yeah, this is the one. So I don't know what you paid for them. Um, it's trading at 149.06 right now. Ooh, September. This is now... This is Yeah, here again, I think using time is good. But I don't want to see a dreaded H, and I don't want to see in August 145.31 the support uh, taken out because that says, oh, it's going to really struggle to get back into the 150s. So uh, this is a little different. Um, in Qualcomm, I'm thinking it's using up so much time. to It's almost like a brand new buy mode. You could do that underneath the previous one. So the MACD is good, but not great. So the CASIC is not good at 57. No, this is a little different. I'd be careful. In fact, if it was me, I, if I could get my even break even or maybe take a fractional loss on at least a little bit of that so I can build up a cash position, um, then I'm going to say to you, that's, that's fine. Um, but if it moves at any state, it, has to, it needs time. <clears throat> It needs speed. It, it cannot take time. It needs speed. 151.50. If it can break above 151.50, that's going to be your best sign to say, good. Now we can maybe tackle the high that was made at 154.80 on the 27th. I go one step at a time. My eye says that I can actually draw in some kind of a rectangle here and say, I wouldn't be surprised if it's stuck in this rectangle just a little bit longer. So I, I'm sorry, now I've got a change of mind because in Qualcomm, it's going to need, it could still work out fine. I just don't know what the support is, that's all. So in the end, we might be looking at it and say, on September the 14th or 15th, say, oh, why did I ever get out of this? This is at 163. But at this particular point, doing my homework, it just says, it's a bit of a struggle here. It hasn't used the benefit of the market being up so nicely to its advantage as it should, and therefore it's struggling. Next question is, what did I forget? I think I've done them all. Uh, yeah, 145 call. QNRX. Is that, how did that sneak in there? QNRX. Whoa! 
up. Uh, QRX was trading it in the fours yesterday, and then it hit just by mistake, I guess. It hit 20, 26, uh, 27, and now it's, uh, today's action is between 22 and 15. All right, I, I, this is not for our regular listeners. This is too tough. Uh, as a trade, I, that's fine. Apple, Apple coming up. So this is the thing about Apple. We want you to buy it at above 147. It kind of messed us around up and down, up and down. Didn't get it. And then I said, oh, let's skip it. And then what did it do? It started this fantastic move about 147 in the middle of July. So here it is at 164. Alternate count G slash C. The MACD is very strong. The 9 is way above the 14. The 9 is at 160 support to 157 is the 14 period moving average. You know, I'd said this about Apple some time ago, that out of all the stocks that we're looking at, if you look at that monthly chart, this is one of the, the best monthly charts that we, we've got. 182 down to 129, 60 points in a high-tech stock that should have been down way, way more. So I think Apple's in play as a go-to for the, the big for the big funds. I, I just don't see why they wouldn't ignore this. I like it. What was the question? Uh, if you have time, cover Apple. I came in late this morning. Um, okay. Uh, just someone remind me, have I forgotten? Was there anything that I missed here in, in looking at the different, uh, uh, the different stocks? Okay. In the meantime, let me show you something very interesting here. In my Chapman Wave automated support and resistance levels, no, that wasn't it. It's this one here. In my automated support and resistance levels, Apple has resistance because it broke all the previous resistance in the daily, has 171 and is trading at 164. The weekly had 161 and it's broken above that. The 120 minute had 165.44 and it broke above it, but now it's a little bit below it. And the monthly chart has 165, 169 and 179 and 121 is key support. This is saying to me that Apple is showing very good relative strength. Relative strength meaning as against the S&P, or maybe you could choose uh, any, of the, any of the stocks. Look at the way it's used the 200 period moving average as a momentary digester phase. And that was a, a chapter wave instant restart right there to actually move up to this new high, recovery high. Now I can talk about the chapter wave falling axe formation and inside track repellent zone coming up as soon as I return. Basil Chapman, Tiger Ignitions Hour. Gosh, we didn't do any of the wheat, so anything. Okay, wheat, as we're going out, wheat is trying to form a base. As uh, soybeans trying to form a base. And corn broke, and now it's on the 200 It has period. been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30-plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro, dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN. Educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I just wanted to mention that that ATOM that was mentioned earlier at Tamara Inc. Uh, uses the. Thank you, Pat. Yes, it, I forgot all about it. Mir's silicon technology. It's just an amazing uh, feat that that they pull off. Um, so yes, I do like that. That that's had a real nice bounce, and it was goes to Peaky's uh, question. So let me go back to uh, two things that I was looking at is um, Apple. So Apple. I'll write it there. No, G. There it goes. Apple is trading. <clears throat> um, it's at 164.80. It's got uh, in a G slash C. There are a couple of things going on with Apple that I wanted to just show you on a shorter term. See this cup formation? And you see that that was the target on the left side. Uh, oh, I thought I'd done that with Apple. I'll do it right now. So you can see that if you go to the plumb line right there, plumb line, right there, um, there, and you move it to the right, this is going to be too far away. It's just missing it. Now, what I normally do is I'm kind of conservative. I go to the left side. And I look at the right, and I look at the price, I look at the H pattern here, and I say, okay, there's a lot of work to make up. So if I just snapped a key right here and went, new, new, as I say, it was a trend line, and you don't have all this the rectangle, you could, that's fine. Look, I do that, my eye says it's going to miss. Well, it missed by three sessions, and then it hit it. But if I use this, you see this, I had already drawn in the left side, right, the, sorry, the chat wave inside wedge target repellent line and I'm just extending it up look it hits it today exactly that's a technique that you can develop and I'll be discussing in my in my webinar on Wednesday week this coming Wednesday so it's fulfilled a whole chunk of things doesn't mean to say you could pull back and then make a D yes what it does say is that the stochastic at 89 percent and flat is really good if the stochastic starts to slip to 83 and then 78 this is going to pull back and one one uh 60 to 157 area will become the support level. But I like the way that Apple is moving just very quietly. It's doing its own thing, um, not with tremendous strength. If you look at the volume, volume keeps coming in and does help it. Even with the gaps, it helps it. But what's really important is that the on-balance volume is a tad overbought, the blue line. I treat on-balance volume with a completely different way than I do volume. I've used on-balance volume since I uh, had studied Granville back in the late 1970s, I think it was. I was in the, yeah, mid to late 70s. So, um, and I used to have to hand notate all these on-balance volume, adding the, on an up day, adding all the, the, the adding the price to the, the running total, and if it was a down day, subtracting and looking at these one thirteen point five million or whatever they are, it was unbelievable. I love the fact that we've automated everything. That's really good. So talking about automated automation, what we are looking at is that a Apple is look at these candles. Just one red candle from the low of one twenty nine, 
um, back on the 16th of June. Every week's been every week's been a higher high with a leg A. You're getting close to look. There's an A and then it pulls back. You're getting close just in time alone for some kind of a pullback in Apple. So yes, it could go a little bit higher. I would prefer to see Apple consolidate between it's 165 between 160 and 157 to give an assessment to say, is it ready for the next big move? And will that move break the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone and start to trade on a weekly basis, two out of three weeks I'd love to see in the 173 area sometime in August. We'll be, be looking at that. But the technicals are really improving in the, in the weekly chart, not so much in the monthly chart. The price is improving in the monthly, and the nine is still way above the 14. That's a big positive. So, um, and Nancy, I, I, I don't know if you have any position in Apple right now, but I am going to say to you, I know that you, I've seen that you've traded it really well before. I like it very much as a core position. Even here at 165, I, if you haven't any Apple and you really want, think Apple's the company, this is the premier in the whole tech um, a, a residual monthly payment. This is the area that you want to be. They're getting everywhere from uh, uh, services, online software, everything they, they're doing, plus plus the consumer area. So I like it, but be prepared that it could be a, a little choppy. So maybe start at 165 if you aren't in it, but you'd like to have some. But basically, it's the area closer to 161 to 157. That would be the starter position for me if you haven't got any right now. So that I want you to do that. Now, let me show you something very interesting. Wheat does wheat. Oh, I did, whenever I hit the wrong key. Something else goes on. All right, let's see where this takes me to. Okay, wheat didn't make the cup formation, but it's making something even more interesting. You see what I love to draw the, the trend lines. I've been doing that ever since I charted an engineering paper, hand charted. So it's it's just fun for me. That's why I took to Trade Station all these years. It used to be super charts. Then they switched over to Trade Station. It's not quite the same company anymore. So they, they, they have a different focus. But look at this. There's a Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. For the first time, wheat is starting to show with the MAGD improving, the stochastic higher than it was, on balance volume is not good at all, but it's starting to show some resiliency. So at 784 and a quarter, if wheat by Monday afternoon, Tuesday morning, doesn't have to close there, but if it can hit 798, the 14 period moving average, push above to 781 or higher and then close any day that it does that above 787 i would say that's that's now going to be a big improvement in the technicals so this is where i would be starting to look at wheat it made a pd with the dreaded h pattern beautiful h pattern right there it went one to one to the downside it's done all the things we're looking for it was a g slash c in the monthly chart uh, wheat continuous contract. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just looking for at least a bounce. And then you can start to think maybe we're getting a cup formation. It's a little uh, obtuse here. And looking at uh, soybeans. Soybeans was acting way better than the others the other day. Had a sharp pullback, trading at 1404. It is in a buy signal. That's not a buy mode yet. It'll go to a buy mode if I, I can see the stochastic at 54 move to about 73% as the price goes to 1440. But if it takes out 13, oh, if it takes out 1355, then that 1330 200 period moving average becomes a magnet. This is a bit shakier, but look at the weekly chart. It's really just been in a huge consolidation in the in the weekly chart just between uh, uh, the 1536 area. And let's call it the 1300. Uh, yeah, let's call it 1300. So it's in that in the middle. It can keep chopping for a little bit longer. Looking at corn, corn, uh, the 200 period moving average has been a magnet. It won't let it get away on the upside or the downside. Therefore, the next move is at 699, no, 600, sorry. The next move that can take it above this candle right here, the candle of the 1st of August with a high of 621 and a half. These are continuous contracts. If it can do that, it means that this little Ch uh, Chapman Wave inverted Roman candle right here, eh, not exactly, but it's close to a Roman candle. It means that at 60, 623 at any point in the next week and a half, once it takes that out, it'll be a quick run to 638 to 640. 
But watch 576, a close on the 576, and you've got yourself a dreaded H pattern. I'll be back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. So in the den, we had Nancy, we were looking at the Apple, and then she said, uh, what did she say? She said, uh, thank you, Basil, I trade options heavily, day trading mostly, thank you. So what I did is I thought, okay, well, this is perfect because I need to show you that this, in all time frames, it doesn't matter what it is, the Chapman Wave is the, is the waveform that never sleeps. So what did I do? I drew this, unfortunately, it was happening while I was drawing it. But I drew in the cup formation. I showed the left side. I put the up arrow. It goes to peak A, peak B. And then I drew afterwards, I drew the chap wave inside wedge target repellent line. And look what happened. It went to peak C and it went to D. And now it's in leg D, uh, 165.45. And that's 44. So this is now leg E. And where did it go to? The high that we targeted was the previous peak E at 11.01 this morning, Eastern Time, at 165.49. And it is trading right now at 165.44 um, in leg E. Uh, did it make? Yeah, leg E. And what's really important is, where did it stop? Where is it stop for four minutes already? It didn't do that before at the 200 period exponential moving average. Uh, look at the beautiful left side. Look at this plumb line. Remember, I talk about the plumb line right there. Did you get the exact number of bars? 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, 30, 30, about 32. And we've got 32 to this peak D right here at exactly the minute. Isn't that nice? Look at that beautiful, the cup formation that I talk about all the time. So that was live trading. Just wanted to show you that it can be done. And uh, don't forget, go to the front page of TFNN. Check out my, um, my uh, webinar coming up, or if I can ever find it, because I won't find it. Oh, there it is. Uh, on Wednesday, all day webinar, August the 10th, Wednesday, and uh, 9 o'clock to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And it's going to go through all these different patterns in all the different time frames. Um, and it repeats over and over. Here's your peak D going to a peak E, and it's starting to pull back a little bit. Hugging the 200 period moving average magnet. I'm going to be talking about magnets. Meantime, I'm talking about nothing else other than I'll be back tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Great programming coming up here. Stay tuned and check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, as well as my webinar coming up. Thank you for being here. Have a great rest of the day.